Hello everyone. Today uh, we are on a beautiful sunny ice rink for this panel session of Winter Arctic event. And uh, I'm Marine from Smart Ad Server. And today I'm very proud to moderate this panel between uh, two leaders in our industry, uh, Dominique Joseph, CEO of Captify, and Arnaud Crépu, CEO of Smart Ad Server. Today, we are going to talk about cookies, probably one of our favorite topics in 2020, just after COVID-19, of course. It is a major challenge for our industry, but it also comes with potential interesting opportunities for our ecosystem. Um, before we do the introduction, uh, I want to mention you that if you have questions, you can uh, ask them in the, uh, in the chat and we will reply at the end of the session. And now I have the pleasure to ask Dominique to introduce himself and his company. Hello, Dominique. Hello. You can go. Hello, bonjour. Hi, uh, I'm Dominic. I'm the CEO of Captify. Thank you very much, Marie, uh, for the introduction. Um, it's great to be here today in this amazing ice rink surroundings here in France. Um, and I'm delighted to, to, to be speaking to you guys. Um, so to introduce myself, as I said, I'm the founder and CEO of Captify. And, and Captify is the largest holder of search data outside of Google. And we connect the search behaviors of around 2.2 uh, billion devices globally. Uh, and we use all of that search data and all the intelligence behind powering that search data uh, to, uh, to inform advertising campaigns and provide um, high performance uh, campaigns for all of our, our brand and agency partners all over the world. And of course, we, are, uh, we have a strategic partnership with Smart um, and uh, we are very much enjoying working with you guys. Thank you, Dominique. And now I have the pleasure to, to ask uh, Arnaud to, to join this panel and to introduce himself and, and Smart. Hi, guys. Hi, Dominique. Hi, Marine. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm very happy to be there at the Captify's Ash Rink. So I look forward, you know, to quickly uh, um, end up this uh, debate, you know, to do some uh, ice, uh, ice skate, ice skating right now. It's a long time I didn't do that. It's very sunny here. That's why I have my sunglasses. And looking forward to, uh, to start debating at, about the cookies and the end of the cookies, actually. Smart is the largest full stack platform in the world, the largest independent full stack platform in the world. And coming from the ad server business is also an ad monetization platform working with uh, more than 1,000 premium publishers in the world, working as well with uh, more than uh, 1,000 advertisers uh, in the world, 12 offices worldwide, Europe, Americas, uh, Asia Pacific. And uh, I would say we just launched very recently in the framework of the uh, partnership with, uh, with Captify, a vertically integrated platform, which will help uh, bringing together, closer together advertisers and publishers in order to activate that data at the SSP level, which is powerful. We'll talk about that later. Thank you, Arnaud. So let's start with some context question. What's happening in our ecosystem? So we are entering a new era where consumer privacy is a prerequisite for all of us. So let's start by the consumer's perspective. Do you think we should feel optimistic about the future of privacy and identity? And will we, as consumer, because we are all consumer, feel a shift or difference in the advertising experience and in our interactions with brands. Dominique, I will let you start with this question. Okay, thank you. Uh, I, think, um, I think clearly we're going through uh, a big industry shift. Uh, you know, the death of the, the third party cookie is something that has been talked about for many years and, and ultimately is a good thing for the industry. And it's also um, a, a very good thing for consumers. Uh, I think uh, as an industry, we have not done a very good job at, uh, ed at educating consumers of how they are ob obtaining free content and using the internet for free in exchange for advertising. And uh, we believe that there is clearly a balance to be struck between consumers sharing their data and, um, uh, uh, and uh, 
uh, in exchange for the free content that they get. And you know, consumers generally do want more relevant advertising. However, the third party cookie was never a, uh, a very efficient tool for the collection of data um, and, the, uh, and the security and privacy around that data. And it created many, many problems for consumer privacy, but also like actually for all of us as companies within the industry, we've, we've all experienced many issues from working with, with third party cookies. So I think all around, it will provide a better, more relevant experience for consumers where they have uh, better control over their data. Um, and then for our side of the industry, we're all looking to work with new technologies and, um, and mechanisms that will enable relevant advertising, but also giving uh, still, still giving consumers that level of control. Okay, thank you, Arnaud. Uh, do you have an opinion as well on this? Yes, I, have a, I do have an opinion on that, and thanks, I fully agree with uh, what uh, what Dominic said. I would say that I'm very optimistic by nature. The question is uh, whether I'm optimistic or, or not. I would say yes. Uh, however, however, you know, I would say that uh, uh, clearly, uh, right now, a consumer on the web sees that uh, small, mid, and, and even large size publishers are doing a lot, you know, in order to, to comply with uh, with uh, privacy rules. However, anyone who uses Google, Facebook, on, uh, or any other World Garden uh, services right now consciously or unconsciously gives up a large part of their uh, privacy rights. What I mean here is that uh, uh, de facto regulator of uh, data privacy here are not data privacy authorities. This is clearly World Garden. This is clearly tech giants. Google, Facebook, Amazon, and uh, and others. So even if the consumer can feel uh, something is happening on the on the open web, uh, uh, that's true. Uh, they can feel at the same time that tech giants are still currently making a lot of fun of uh, data privacy rules. You know that. Huh? You know how the data models are working at Google. How data models are working at Facebook. So um, uh, right now, tech giants are making a lot of fun of everything. However, I am optimistic in the sense that um, even if we are at the prehistory of a web privacy, a revolution is on. Um, a revolution for data privacy, as you can understand, huh, is a, a revolution against GAFA. Huh? It's uh, nothing less than that. This revolution which is done is a revolution against GAFA. For sure, GAFA are smart. For sure, uh, uh, this GAFA will resist a lot. Uh, they will resist a lot. So this is why I am, I, I am optimistic, but I pronostic that it will take probably one full generation, you know, to reach the future state of uh, privacy uh, on the web. A full generation, uh, full generation, I mean, minimum 15 to 20 years. Uh, we'll try Captify and Smart, however, to make it much quicker than that. Uh, so the question you may ask to yourself is why do you say you are optimistic if you say it will take 20 years? I am optimistic in the sense that, you know, if I were pessimistic, I would say it will never happen. It will happen only for the weeks. So I mean, small, mid, and even large size publishers are never for the strongs. And the strongs are Google and Facebook. It will happen and will be able uh, to take over this data model, which is uh, ongoing on the, on the big tech platforms. Thank you, Arnaud, for your positive attitude. You mentioned the, the GAFA, and it's perfect because my next question is about uh, Google announcement. So they they announced that they will uh, that um, they announced the degradation of third-party cookies in 2022. So this is creating more complexity in the digital ecosystem. So what's your view, um, Dominique, on uh, the impact on various parts of the ecosystem for brands, agency, publishers, of course, the, the, end, the end customer, but uh, more globally for the open web? What do you think about that? Well, I think uh, there, there is a lot of knock-on effects and there's still a lot of unknowns. Um, there's still a lot of uh, areas uh, being worked through with the um, uh, with the Google, uh, the Chrome privacy sandbox and the, the different solutions that are within that, which are very interesting solutions. And, um, but there's still some, still some developments to come from that. Um, what we do know is that it's probably not a good idea for companies to, to just sit around and wait for, uh, for the changes to happen. You know, we actually don't know when the changes are going to happen. You know, they're still working on the, uh, the, uh, the, the cross site sort of, uh, relevant advertising side of the, uh, the, the Chrome changes, and they've still got an entire, 
um, uh, uh, problem to solve with measurement, which in influences the entire industry as well. Um, so uh, so it is, it's possible there's going to be a very long delay before this actually fully kicks in. However, I think all companies have got to start adapting now. And we've had a, you know, we've had a, a good year now since the announcement. And I think a, lo a lot has happened in this last year. Uh, and clearly brands, publishers, advertisers, agencies all need to start thinking about, um, you know, how they're going to change and adapt to the real world. There's been a lot of talk about contextual and that's one, you know, that's one area of um, future, you know, targeting and that's going to improve yields for publishers, but it's also going to, you know, improve um, performance for advertisers. However, you know, we certainly believe at Captify uh, that there is, there is going to be more demand than ever for data, for great data and combining great data with great inventory. Um, and that's certainly what we're, we're, we're doing with the smart guys. Um, and, you know, I think that there are plenty of ways that that's going to continue to happen. And, uh, and I think we're seeing a huge rise in, the, in, in publishers authenticating users, and that's going to continue over the next year. Um, there's some very strong solutions coming through from some of the identity players in the space that are going to improve those match rates. Um, and then uh, there's you know, the, the recent developments with the Trade Desk and Unified ID with LiveRamp. Are also going to help the scale issue, the, the scale uh, issue that has happened because of the lack of authentication over the last couple of years, um, and you know I really feel like the industry is starting to move forward now. I feel like there's uh, been some really good clear steps that have been happened. I think publishers need to work out what they're going to do with their data and how they're going to best monetize and improve the yields of their inventory. And I think actually the the solution that Captify and um, Smart have, Smart have been doing by merging the the data with the uh, publishers' media has a, uh, is, is a fantastic example of us kind of working around, um, you know, the new world that we're working in, um, which is preparing us for all the different types of identity solutions, contextual, et cetera, by bringing together data and publishers in a way that we can, we can, we can make sure that that consumer intent is, is improving the yields of publishers' media. Thank you, Dominique. And you, Arnaud, uh, how do you feel about that? Yes, I think. Uh, yes, I think first. Huh? So, so uh, uh, clearly, the the, the fact that um, that Chrome and Google huh, are degrading third-party cookies by the twenty twenty is a major event, as everyone knows. So, right now, seventy-two percent of European computers are running on the Chrome browsers and Chromium. So, after Firefox and Safari, you know, we implemented some tracking restrictions. Clearly, it puts an end to. Uh, third-party cookies, so that's clear for everyone. I don't won't come back on that. After that, you know, there, there is first there is the uh, the initiative which is led by Google with the privacy sandbox. It's an opportunity. There are some uh, interesting things in this uh, in this initiative. However, and clearly this is uh, an attempted push from Google, you know, to use their dominance on uh, in search, in uh, online advertising, and web browsers in order to take over the whole open web advertising industry. As you know, there are uh, hundreds of billion dollars at stake. They know at Google that uh, they need to uh, own, uh, you know, um, uh, the means by which media companies, advertisers, and technology businesses reach their consumers um, and, and, uh, and the web users. And clearly, uh, if we don't react, if we don't do so, all of these initiatives that uh, that Dominic listed, uh, clearly this change will be irre irreversible. Huh? So that's, uh, I think that's clear for everyone. Um, so there are two important things which are happening now. The first one is that first advertisers and publishers start understanding that this is urgent to react. And the first reaction is that they, they are complaining, they are preparing their complaints or already complaining uh, towards antitrust authority, especially in the UK. Huh? It starts with the UK and it will uh, extend, it will be extended very soon in uh, other countries, France for sure, the US as well, and uh, other European and Australia, why not? Um, so we, they have and they need to regulate this uh, privacy sandbox before it goes out. Privacy sandbox, once it will be uh, live, uh, it will take a lot of time to change uh, the way it is working. So we need first to participate in this initiative to check that this is fully open uh, to uh, third-party partners, publishers, and advertisers. And so after that, this is a powerful tool, you know, to do uh, uh, some uh, good uh, um, uh, targeted advertising without any kind of personal data. 
hopefully there are many initiatives which are going on. I won't list everything Dominique listed already, but uh, I would say that uh, first, uh, uh, and, and I think I'm switching a little bit to the next question, but I can uh, I can do it now if you want. So there is first an urgency for publishers uh, to win this uh, consent economy, this consent race. Uh, right now, you know, the consent levels are uh, close to 95% in Europe, but it could decrease a lot, especially in France with uh, the, uh, the data privacy authority recommendation, which will come into force uh, in March, 2022. And we expect that the, the consent could decrease to uh, uh, something like in between 50 and 70% with the new rules. Uh, so this is really important to win this consent race. This is really important to ally together like a union um, uh, the non union net ID pass media initiatives in some of the largest countries in France. What marketers are looking for, you know, is to work with players that can give quality, scale, but also transparency. This is what marketers are looking right now. Publishers have to ally together. They have to collect and share uh, first party data IDs. They have to boycott. Facebook Connect, they have to boycott Google Sign Plus. A lot of publishers start doing that. Everyone should do it right now uh, without waiting a single second. After this panel, you have to stop uh, offering the possibility, you know, to connect to, uh, to a website through this kind of, uh, of IDs. And the, the, the main objective is to take back control, to organize the scarcity of the first party data, to organize it into a curated web, and partner, of course, with vertically integrated independent tech partners like Smart and Captify in order to maximize the value of their first party data. I'll let you react on that, Dominique, and then I will speak about advertisers and that's tech fantastic. partners. Yeah. I, I have to say, it's usually me that's doing all the uh, all the uh, the Google bashing, but I'm, uh, you got, you've got some great angles there. And I think that I think everything you're saying is 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 very powerful and. Um, uh, very meaningful. There's a lot of thought. I know it sounds sensationalist, but it's actually very well thought through everything you're saying. And, you know, everything you're saying is, is really uh, highlighting all the different ways that, uh, that, that the dominant forces are sapping the data out of the, uh, out of the industry and, um, you know, and controlling various elements of the ecosystem and, and, you know, independent players like us and, you know, like the rest of the industry around us. Um, hold a lot of value here to give uh, marketers fantastic solutions where we're not going to we're not going to eat their lunch. We're not going to take um, their data and do things with it in a, in a way which um, could compromise their own asset. And, um, and I think that's very important that, that that brands and marketers can work with trusted partners. Um, so yeah, I think uh, on a, I think some some great points there. Um, yeah, I think I think look, ultimately it's a it's a it's a transitional phase. Everybody needs to adapt quickly. Um, and there's a lot of great solutions and partners out there to work with um, to help uh, help publishers and, and brands uh, navigate through this. Um, there's some great, fantastic technologies that are really um, breaking boundaries. The great thing about what's happened with Google setting the dates is it's really led to a lot of innovation in the industry and everybody really working together now. Finally, after a, after a long time of kind of all standing off, I think it's starting to happen now that, 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 that everyone's coming together. And I think that's a great thing. So, uh, you know, publishers need to make sure um, that they're staying abreast of, of these changes, that they are working with the right partners. Advertisers and agencies need to be working with great quality data providers with first party relationships and good technologies to take the value out of that. Um, and, uh, and agencies need to start thinking about how they're going to uh, evolve their media mix and um, prepare for the changes that are going to happen over the next year. Okay, well, yeah. thank, thank you. Arnaud, you wanted to react? I let you react directly. Yeah, yeah no, no, I think, uh, uh, I think the, good thing is, the, the good thing with Dominique is that uh, we are 100% aligned on uh, almost everything. You should have invited Marine, someone, you know, who <laughs> represent uh, a, a tech giant or a tech platform in order to get, uh, you know, a, a powerful debate on that. But uh, clearly, I think uh, we are many to, uh, to uh, think that. I would just add for the marketer's point of view, you know, there are two things which are really urgent for them, marketers, agencies, first uh, is to get closer to first party da data. So as we already said, this is exactly what we are doing with Captify right now, uh, is to uh, activate first party data on a vertically uh, integrated platform and use 
the quality data, premium data, which is coming from Captify and which is fully complementary to what marketers can find on Facebook and Google. I'm not asking marketers to stop spending and to stop targeting you know, uh, social networks and so on, but uh, the reach is limited, the performance is limited to, to get something complete. They absolutely need to keep a significant part of their spends you know, for uh, this uh, kind of uh, tracking uh, uh, solutions. Clearly what marketers have to do on top of that, uh, getting closer to first party data, uh, is also, you know, to integrate new targeting solutions. And I think the uh, marketers are not yet ready for that. Uh, they are uh, working on data. They are working on the best targeting solutions and so on. They also have, you know, to find alternatives to prepare uh, for the future. And to prepare for the future is being able, for instance, to integrate a semantic solution, contextual solution, to, to increase the understanding of uh, performance targeting as well all of the you know cookie less uh, targeting uh, solutions they can have right now so the answer is not one or the user uh, uh, targeting solution but it's a mix of everything and what marketers have to do right now is to find the best mix mm -hmm. a little bit of social networks a large part of course of a premium audience uh, with uh, premium publishers premium data coming from uh, captify and others and also um, I would say uh, some uh, some contextual and semantic, and they need to quickly ramp up for uh, this kind of uh, targeting uh, solutions. Thank you, Arnaud. Uh, but you're right. Huh? The, the marketer should uh, change the way they operate. But since we still have some cookies, uh, <laughs> they are taking advantage of them until the end, I think. <laughs> um, okay, so I think we, we, we are done on how uh, the industry is, res is responding to the challenge uh, and the initiative. So let's speak about uh, strategy and roadmap. Uh, Dominique, what is Captify uh, strategy uh, regarding post-cookie? Well, we have, uh, you know, various things that we're doing. So, um, you know, at, very similar to what Arno just said. So we're obviously very close to our first party data, and this is, is the core of our model. So um, stitching together the, uh, the first party data from our publisher base and then mapping it with, with uh, good quality inventory is at the core of what we do. Um, we're then also with our, with our search graph, which is our, our deterministic search graph, we're also powering a contextual product off the back of that as well. So we, we look at the context that is surrounding every single search that we see. And that we, we then, in, that then informs our model that to then drive a, a huge scale through contextual, uh, which is all powered off search data. So it's a search powered contextual graph. And uh, we're, we're very excited about this. We've been developing this all year and um, been generating fantastic results for, uh, in testing. And we're gonna be rolling this out all the way through next year. Uh, with our client base um, and then we're also quite excited about the changes that might happen in the chrome environment as well so we think that there's going to be some um, some good developments there which could really help us with regards to um, interest groups and um, and cohort ids and different ways you know i think there's still concerns over the level of control that google will have on these so i think we still need to work through certain areas of uh, uh, um, uh, of that uh, with them at the moment but i think uh, we're quite excited about some of those changes but I think there's, you know, we're seeing a huge, huge uh, uptake from our clients in our programmatic solution, the one that we've uh, released with Smart. Um, uh, we call it PSI, P uh, Programmatic Search Intelligence. And um, this is enabling traders, uh, agencies and brands to essentially buy data enriched media directly from a deal ID. Um, so they can simply have a line item through Smart uh, with a Captify deal ID um, through Smart. So you're having the rich you know, um, fresh search data powering great inventory. Um, and uh, that's available now to, uh, to marketers uh, all over Europe. Um, and uh, we're very excited about that product that's getting crazy traction. I mean, it's, it's growing faster than our company has ever grown. It's uh, really amazing. Um, and then we've also released a self-service platform for our clients to be able to query the search data, to be able to query that contextual graph and create those segments so that they then will get sent through to smart to, to actually create those data enriched um, deal IDs uh, available in your own DSP. So um, our platform is called Sense and uh, Sense is a, has many different areas to it. It's also a publisher side platform as well. Um, and, uh, but it's also an advertiser and agency side platform and um, brands can go in and query the search data, look at trends, 
look at the overlap of their own first party data as well with our search data to create their own custom audiences, which we then combine with smarts media to create those deal IDs. So for us, that's the most um, uh, uh, exciting part of what we're doing as a company right now. It's embracing the changes in the, uh, in the cookie landscape, using identity, using contextual, and then give, uh, combining it with great media on a programmatic level uh, for PSI, uh, and then using our self-service platform Sense uh, to enable marketers to access that and do what they like with it on a custom basis. Thanks you very much. Uh, Arnaud, what about Smart then? Uh, smart it is uh, quite complementary with uh, what uh, was what uh, what captify is doing right now and that's uh, the reason why we are partnering right now so uh, we are doing uh, several things the, the, the first one i would say as everyone uh, as uh, all uh, ssp uh, ssp platform we are preparing for this uh, id world as uh, the id world which was would replace part of the cookie uh, era uh, so this is to collect, you know, any kind of uh, first party IDs, universal IDs and so on, and to pass it to uh, uh, DSPs. This is live already. We are doing that with the Criteo, the Threadbusk, uh, ID5 and so on. LiveRamp is being integrated as well. So we are just uh, uh, making our platform evolve in order to collect that as many as we want. So there will be no limitation. First party ID uh, uh, as well. Uh, in order just to be able to collaborate and to uh, and to work with uh, demand partners on that side, uh, the second one is uh, is uh, clearly a, a, a significant investment in uh, everything which is a cookie based targeting. This is already you know twenty percent of our uh, programmatic revenues today are not based on the cookies. This is I mean semantic performance targeting programmatic guaranteed you know which is. Uh, targeting capabilities which are not uh, based on on cookies and what we can say is that you know the uh, the performance on uh, context on semantic targeting is just uh, is just powerful and is uh, clearly uh, under leverage right now by a marketer so we are pushing a lot in that direction so this is first education uh, we need to educate buyers uh, trading desk agencies uh, to better understand, better assess uh, how um, powerful, you know, semantic and contextual targeting can be with the use of, uh, of uh, machine learning, um, as this is clear. And then we are participating in uh, all industry initiatives like privacy sandbox, uh, trying to influence as much as we can, but uh, at the minimum, at the first level is to deeply understand how it will uh, be working and to make sure that uh, it will protect our publishers and advertiser interests first and not Google's interests first, participating to uh, REARC as well, which is uh, an important initiative, but you know, uh, there are something like 1,000 people contributing at the same time to this initiative. So this is still a little bit like a, a mess, but we are optimistic and we believe that by uh, maybe June next year, something will uh, emerge uh, from that and, and it is interesting. We are pushing as well, and I think this is the main big initiative for everyone, uh, which is to, to build uh, this privacy sandbox for the open web, something which would not be owned by uh, uh, web browsers and especially not Google. So we need an independent privacy sandbox like tool, open, uh, an open source, which will be uh, available for uh, profiling core profiling targeting solutions for everyone tech partners but also of course publishers and advertisers and i would say the most important thing we are doing so on, on that i think we align with uh, uh, most of the players in this uh, in this industry and uh, most of the ssps uh, what we are doing and this is two years we are investing on that is the vertical integration of our platform so this is clearly uh, the best answer to the end of cookies this is uh, to value first party data to enable as i already said uh, buyers and uh, tech partners you know to activate their data uh, advertisers first party data at the ssp level so it's to get closer to the first party data of the publishers uh, to be able to do deep audience deep discovery uh, uh, media planning deal management at the ssp level uh, to do some uh, SPO as well, uh, supply pass optimization, what we call 
at smart uh, value pass optimization. So this is to enable um, uh, buyers, you know, to activate everything at the SSP level with less intermediaries uh, in a cost-efficient platform. And our promise is to divide uh, the ad tech tax by two uh, once uh, it will be launched end of Q1. And as well, what we uh, our bet is on transparency. Yeah? Our bet, our biggest bet uh, right now, the whole industry speaks about transparency, but I think we go beyond transparency. We go uh, to something which is closer to traceability. Traceability is just a demonstration for buyers, advertisers, trading desk of what they are buying, at what price, uh, how much is going you know, in the pockets of, uh, of the publishers, how, how much uh, get to um, uh, tech partners. And uh, if, you, if you do at the same time, you know, traceability by design and dividing the, the tech tax uh, by two, we give good reasons to advertisers and uh, agencies, you know, to rebalance a little bit their spends from uh, uh, social networks, Google and Facebook, to uh, the open web. And this is what we uh, intend to do for 2021. Thank you. Uh, so my next question, we already uh, spoke uh, more or less already about that, but still uh, we can go into uh, more details. So uh, Smart and Captify, so we announced uh, recently a partnership. Um, so uh, yes, uh, we will start with you, Arno. but can you explain us in detail what we, what we are doing concretely? And then I will ask uh, Dominique to speak about the benefits for Captify of uh, activating the data directly with Smart. So I think it's uh, the perfect use case, you know, on this uh, vertical integration of our platform plus uh, data marketplace, you know, activation. So uh, Captify will be using uh, our tool Smart Buyer Connect and our data marketplace in order to, uh, to, uh, to activate their data at the SSP level and in order to get the maximum value uh, and the maximum targeting capabilities, merging the uh, rich uh, first party data coming from the demand side advertisers together with the first party data coming from the publishers and to build a kind of private garden, you know, uh, uh, as opposed to world garden, private garden for uh, publishers, you know, and, uh, and enabling advertisers, uh, marketers, and publishers working closely together in a very powerful uh, data marketplace, uh, which is enabled by both uh, Smart and Captify. Thank you. Uh, so Dominique, yes, so you. Yeah, I think, I think Arno has, uh, has explained it very well. I think, um, you know, Cap Captify offers marketers the chance to, uh, to access consumers who are uh, in the moment of explicit intent so they're specifically looking for something, whether it's a, whether it's a product or a brand. Um, it could be their competitor's product. It could be moments. It could be life moments, trigger moments. You know, we specialize in using search data to understand the customer journey that happens before a transaction. And brands can really harness that to create profiles um, that can improve the performance of their ad campaigns. So, so it's either profiles at the upper level, upper, upper funnel or, or down the bottom of the funnel, it's real intent, explicit um, trigger moments. And uh, that data is very, very powerful. You know, I think, you know, Google, uh, as much as we've talked about, um, you know, the issues with them in the industry, I think that the, they have actually demonstrated as well the power of search data. You know, this is a 110 um, billion advertising business that's really come around from, that's really been born from the power of search data. Um, so it's very it's totally proven that this is a very powerful asset for marketers. And we realized uh, 10 years ago that there was an awful lot of search data that doesn't happen on Google and, and, uh, and Amazon. In fact, an incredibly large amount of very, very good, powerful search data that's closer to transaction. It's more granular. Um, it's less browsing based. So we brought all of that in together um, and uh, we uh, were able to now create the value of that search data for marketers to then access. And, um, this partnership with Smart is uh, is a fantastic way for us to uh, merge, you know, great inventory um, uh, from with a trusted supplier as well to, to the different markets in Europe, um, with us as also a trusted supplier of great data and data intelligence to our clients to create this vertically integrated um, data enriched media offering. 
Um, so you know it's available now, and uh, we we are uh, we are uh, delighted to to welcome all the all the different brands onto this uh, onto this new platform. Thank you. So uh, yeah, we are coming to to the end of my question. So clearly, uh, listening to you, uh, the title was uh, was real. No cooking, no problem. We are we are all getting prepared, even if uh, if the road uh, is uh, still long before cookies are definitely away. Uh, anything to to add before I go to my last question, which is uh, not related to cookies, Dominique no, or think, Arnaud? I think, I think we've covered it. <laughs> okay, so we are good. So I'm going to ask a last question. So outside of cookies, 2020 was a crazy year. And what would be your wish for next year, Dominique? Okay, for me, I, I think uh, my uh, my wish is to be uh, is to be. Uh, it, it may not come true, um, but is to be back at Can Lions uh, with uh, all of my industry friends and all of our friends from all over the world uh, together, back face to face, having a drink, sitting on the smart. I don't know if you have a yacht this year, but the, the smart <laughs> yacht or the Captain Five Villa. Um, uh, we have to see whether we, none of us know at the moment whether Can Lions is going to happen or not, and suspect that it might not happen because of the, uh, the the lack of some of the big American companies coming over. Um, but I'm sure that we'll be there regardless. Uh, but that would be my wish. I think we're all missing some um, some face to face time with all of our, our contacts and friends in the industry. And it's it's been a it's been a, a great year in many ways of, you know, despite all the challenges that we faced. I think that we've all learned how to adapt to a new world, you know, like like now, for example, you know, in, in this environment we're in. And but it's only one dimension. And uh, uh, I'm really looking forward to getting that people side back to our industry because it's one of the best things about the advertising industry. Uh, yes, and I think it's a dream that we all have. Okay, Arnaud, on your side, what's your dream, uh, your wish for next year? I have, the, I have, of course, the exact same wish as Dominique. On top of this one, you know, we are in a very nice uh, ski resort here. I just wish that the mechanical lifts will reopen soon. Uh, so this is uh, still uh, expected, uh, I hope, for uh, early January, hopefully. And a second wish, if I can, is, uh, you know, climatic cooling. Huh? I am uh, really, uh, really, really hot uh, today uh, in this uh, ski resort at more than uh, 1,500 uh, uh, meters. It's too hot. I wish uh, some one or maybe two degrees of uh, climatic cooling. What do you think? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> um, okay, thank you. We have question. Uh, we have one question at least. Uh, so Arnaud and Dominique, you can see it uh, on our on our chat. So are the custom audiences created and Captiva, so I suppose it Captify, portable across media for the advertiser, making it in a sense open internet. Uh, so I, I think this is for you. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. So the, the custom audiences can be created through the platform or we can work with you guys to do it on a uh, uh, on a sort of managed service basis as well. Um, it can be any, you know, any kind of pre-targeting. Um, you can also learn off your, your existing first party data. So you can model off that to look at the search behaviors that have been leading to conversions or uh, even visits on your uh, on your own advertiser domain. Um, and look at those search behaviors to power these new custom audiences. Um, and then absolutely, we, uh, we, we then partner with Smart and uh, we have a wide range of media that is available. So uh, um, it's, a, it's a very customizable solution uh, with, with huge amount of scale on premium inventory across multiple channels. Okay, thanks Dominique. So that's actually the only question we had. So uh, I will uh, finish by thanking you, Dominique and Arnaud. It was a real pleasure and an honor for me to, to moderate this panel. Ah, sorry, there is one question just came in. <laughs> With the Captify PSI solution plugged to SBC, uh, are we sure to have fresh data? Uh, I mean, a great question, I think. Um... You know, one of the issues with data in the past has always been, you know, this categorized data that is out of date and stale and old. So a lot of people have struggled with, you know, looking at a taxonomy of data and working out whether it really makes an impact. And Captify over the last 10 years has really specialized in fresh data that's coming in in real time and completely customizable. Um, and actually this year has been a great example of, you know, post-COVID, 
outbreak, you need to be using fresh data because the world is totally different. You know, what somebody was looking for before is not relevant anymore. You know, this is a new world that we're in right now. Um, and, you know, all of our data is completely fresh coming in in real time and then immediately merged with, um, with, uh, with Smart to provide a, a, a totally fresh, uh, dynamic, audience-enriched media product. Okay, perfect. Uh, so maybe we can just wait a few seconds before closing this call. Uh, maybe we'll have a last question. Okay, uh, so no question coming. So yes, thank you, Arnaud. Thank you, Dominique. It was a real pleasure for me on this uh, sunny ice rink to be all together. I wish you a very good end of the year uh, and a very good uh, and a much better 2021 than 2020. And uh, if you want to say last word before we close. Uh, merci Thanks beaucoup. a lot. Thanks Bye. a lot, uh, Dominique and mine. And let's do some uh, ice skating now. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. Bye. Thank you, Smart. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.